All right, you wily jewelry rebels out there. Ben Boom back in the house. Uh, this is a custom piece that I was commissioned to make. It was actually, it's a birthday gift. So it's actually the husband that commissioned me. And they told me a dog paw, four palmera flowers representing each member of the family. They're from Hawaii, but they're here in Colorado now. So I made a, like the, a, a wave kind of into the flowers. Um, circle of life. Wanted in the commission also a sun and mountains and a horse representing uh, love for horses and maybe some, I don't know if they have horses, mountains, clouds, sun, and uh, yeah, mountains right here on the cuff ends. Right here we did mountains, and on this end we also did mountains, these little coves, these are like little coves. So yeah, friends, it was a joy to make. Um, Millie helped me with the polishing, and she did an excellent job. She always does. I mean, dude, I can't take credit for that. Now we're at the stage, friends, where we're going to set the stone. Um, I'm not an expert stone setter. In fact, I'm, I would say I'm a beginner stone setter. And I've gotten a lot of advice on how to set the stones. In Native American culture, we put tobacco in the bottom and then set the stone on the tobacco. Tobacco is sacred um, in our culture, and tobacco is often used. Um, if not tobacco, sawdust. I've seen sawdust used. Um, in the jewelry group, some people suggest pieces of cardboard, a piece of cardboard under there, or a couple pieces of stacked cardboard, however long, however high you need it. Um, I've heard nothing. Um, just set the stone over nothing, and if you set it properly, then it sits in there really nice. Um, I really don't subscribe to using epoxies or glues. Um, for just traditional reasons, really, um, I, I don't think it's necessary if you set the stone right. But to each their own, if you use epoxy and glue, you know that stone's probably not coming out. Although I talked to one of my jewelry friends and she said that she used that 600, E is 600 epoxy or glue that you can get at Harbor Freight or you can get them in different places. But, um, and the stone came out. So I, I don't know if there's a difference between two part epoxy glues and that super glue stuff that she used, but, um, I would suggest probably stay away from the glues if you can. If you can get a depth on your bezel that will really hug the stone, you're not going to need glue. So today, friends, is I, I made some sawdust. I don't know if this is enough. Originally, guys, because this is a castellated bezel and I made it kind of tall. And I was thinking about using this piece of copper as a base plate so that the stone sat a little higher. Now, this is a little tip. If you guys don't know, many of you probably do, but use uh, dental floss if you're going to kind of mock up your stone so you can pull your stone out. This is a way that I've done it before, and I've had some success with it. So that was my original thought, was to use this, put the stone on top of this, and then squeeze it down. But I decided to go against using the piece of copper, and instead we're going to use sawdust. So... Um, Let's uh, throw some sawdust in here and see if we have enough. I just sawed a piece of board that I had. Like I said, I'm not an expert, guys. I'm really a beginner, like probably some of you. And um, we're just going to go for it. A nice bed of sawdust. One thing that I was told is good about sawdust <laughs> is that it actually acts as a little bit of a cushion on your stone. If, you're, if you bump your stone against something hard, it will kind of cushion the stone a little bit. And when you're working with turquoise, friends, turquoise is a relatively soft stone. I don't know exactly what number soft it is on the scale, um, but I think it's kind of in the middle, maybe on the lower end of the, uh, of the hardness. Maybe I'll ed edit that out because I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Sometimes I could just look at the stone and see the way it sits. I think that's the way. I think I remember the brown is on the bottom, the, where the more of the brown turquoise is on the bottom. So I have a nice bed of sawdust in there. I don't know if you guys can see that. I have some more sawdust if I need to take this out and try again. But let's just believe in this. Some of this stuff, guys, we just have to go for it. See, that's the profile of the stone. I put it in there. 
you can see we have a little bit of highness on this side and some highness which is which what you want because you want to be able to have enough material to go over and hug the stone feels really level i am going to uh have my assistant come and help me tapping these uh serrates closed and i do have my assistant millie with me she's sitting to my left just outside of the screen and uh she's gonna use this as i set this stone because uh, i'm gonna need another i need help and this is the way i do it guys i did if the, I hope somebody that is really good at setting stones is watching this because I need some tips. I think we all do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this ring so I don't press against it. But I want to use my finger and I'm going to hold it. And I might, sometimes I hold it against this. This is a rubber block. Guys, I've had this since I started doing jewelry. I got this in my beginning starter pack that I was talking about in my last video that I got on Amazon. And it came with a bunch of tools. Not the highest quality tools, but um tools that you need to get started and once you start playing and you're like hey i use this a lot i need a better one then you can upgrade and okay let's just go for it millie you ready 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 all righty <sighs> very very a little bit stressful because i'm not very good at this okay. ready hit harder okay we got the west side now we're gonna go east side okay west and east let's go north and we're just doing the preliminary taps to get these these uh, serrates to start to bend in. Go. Thank you. One more. Let's do this one right here, please. Bam. Thank you. Go. Okay. So we got. Okay. Now I'm going to go northeast, northwest. Not Kanye's son. I'm looking at each castellation and I, I just want for they're gonna they bend over kind of individually i am put my thumb on the stone so if it hits it, if it slides off it slides into my thumb ready go so we're just gonna go all the way around the bezel friends until i see all the things kind of hugging the stone ready go thank you i'll probably go over this a little bit more you don't have to watch it all because it's kind of boring but friends let's look at that stone let's look at that in there it is a little bit recessed below the castellations, which is what I want. Um, work to your own preference. Uh, this stone is uh, pretty cool in that piece, friends. What do you guys think? So I'm going to go over a little bit more. You're doing that again. I'm going to go over the whole stone around it until those blend in just one, just a little bit better. And uh, I'll skip right to that point. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Now, uh, friends, at the end, I do burnishing. This is sterling silver serrated bezel. Uh, typically, they say uh, to use 18 gauge to do this, but on this one, I use 20 gauge. And because uh, I just needed it a little bit thinner, I textured the bezel with my ball peen hammer to give it those little divot textures. Um, so it's 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 very beat up looking, which is really cool on these serrated bezels. So when I when I burnish guys i just am trying to just smooth out the crown area of the bezel with fine silver silver this is a lot very effective fast with sterling silver you kind of have to go over it a little bit guys and just the key friends is to watch the tip of your burnisher um so it doesn't come into contact with anything around it because it will scratch so i just use the belly of the burnisher and I don't put too much pressure on it. I don't want to put too much pressure. Just enough. Okay, so I'm just kind of rubbing the crown of this bezel. Just really aesthetically. I, and and it, I'm sure it's probably pushing in. On a regular bezel, this would be like the fine-tuning of your push-in of your bezel. Um, but on these castellated bezels that are made with thicker gauge, um, I don't really think that we're pushing in a whole lot i think we're mostly just aesthetically working on the rim and that was nice guys let's look at that um, maybe i'll go through with my fine silicone disc and right along the edge in fact that is what i'm going to do i might tape the stone so my disc doesn't act but i'm really meticulous i can get in there 
Okay, enough of the sound effects. I'm Benny Boom. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video or gained anything from it or can give me some feedback, please do so. And if you love in jewelry adventures and love uh, learning how to do like really groovy jewelry, come hang out with me, man. My name is Benny. I'm here. I only have like 500 subscribers, my small channel. Um, subscribe and be a part of like what we're doing. So I try to drop at least once. I've been dropping like two videos a week. But it's summertime, and I want to get out hiking and doing some fun stuff. So um, I'm probably going to be doing one a week until fall comes and it starts getting chilly. And I want to be back in here a lot, a lot. Which I always want to be back in here a lot, a lot. But I need to get out to and enjoy the nature. Because I live in beautiful western Colorado. And got to do it, man. So, guys, get out there. Have fun with jewelry. Um, I'm going to put my Instagram on the end of this so you guys could, like, Follow me, and I can, I want to follow you guys. I want to see what kind of stuff you guys are doing. I want to be inspired by you guys um, and say, wow, I never thought of that. So please let's share and let's create community, guys. I'm Benny. I'm out. Peace.